Que viva. You know, it's a long road, a long road coming. Here we are, 2013. It was over 40 something years ago when I first became an activist. I was very encouraged at that time by a gentleman named Catarino Gutado, a brown beret. A gentleman who thought that he could bring about a change in gangs in our community. Yeah, we had gangs. We had gangs like in Sunset, the Sunset Skulls, West Side, the Frisco Gang, the Intruders in Southeast Fresno, Park Side, Pinedale, oh, let's not forget the Chanclas from Sanger. <laughs> Gangas has been around for many, many years, and I was very much part of that. In my education, decided to go on to college, it was very coincidental. I was the least in my family, and much less the first in my family to ever go to and get an education in the higher educational system. I was blessed because brothers and sisters before me who fought for Rasa studies and for the EOP program, they gave me the opportunity to get an education. I was committed to that education very slowly, as Mr. Chacon had said earlier, I started off with the C's and D's, uh, yeah, a couple of F's there and then. And I suddenly realized that I could read, I could write, and I could do math, because I was far behind when I got into college. And I had to work two, three times harder than most students. But I did it. I was successful at it. I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to be that pigeon someone talked about. But a home pigeon. I wanted to be able to open up the gates and work in my body, not leave the body, work in my body. You see, I, I grew up in West Fresno at a very young age. I was already hanging out in Chinatown, and they called me the Chinatown boy, along with a variety of kids, because we used to shoot shoe shop. And in that process, obviously we'd hang out at Mama Sam's pool room, have a good time. So it wasn't hard for me to be part of a clica a gang, a group, somebody I could identify with, others who could identify with me, because we have some commonality, success in the barrio. So when my family decided to move to Southeast Fresno, I was quite shocked. I didn't even know that we had a Southeast Fresno. <laughs> so where did that come from? So there, there's no doubt I, have, I was hesitant. I didn't want to go to uh, a part of town that was basically a white community. I wasn't used to it. In fact, I didn't even know it existed. But I bared with it, I became part of a gang, and in that process, I got to meet Catarino Gutaro at a liquor store, of all places, right? The Bottle House on Belmont in Cedar Avenue. And he placed me in a car with about five or six guys, and I recognized them. And funny enough, that one was a guy from Parkside, another was an intruder, another was a night owl, another was from, from uh, Pinedale, and I'm going, oh my God, four or five gangs in the middle of me. What's going to happen? And they told me, look, we understand you guys are going to have a rumble, because I belong to a group called Los Camancheros. And we were going to rumble with the intruders. And somehow he knew about it. He says, we can't have that. I said, why not? Because we're carnales. We say, what? We're carnales. Carnal? My brother? We're brothers? What's he talking about? He said, for too long we've been killing ourselves. At some point and at some time we have to realize that we're not the enemy, not internally. The enemy is outside of us. And if we can stop the gangs from fighting and work together, we can end it. So, you know, they dropped me off, they left me with these memories, and I quickly went back to my gang and said, Hey, sabes que? Me pararon. A que hombre? Los Brambo Reyes. Que le chingazos? Man, we rounded up the group, we were ready, we headed out to Butler and, and, uh, and Hamilton, and we were ready to fight with the Brambo Reyes next to their headquarters. Out comes Catarino, little man, not too big, and my, and my leader, Jose, Flores, or Joe Flores, called Little Joe Flores. And they were ready to throw, I thought. They started talking. And after a while, they both broke away, went back to their groups, and Joe invites us in with Catarino. 
we became carnales, we became friends, we started coming meetings, we started learning about what the movement was, we started realizing that we are people of dignity, that we are, can, we can be united. And then one day, someone asked me to file out an application and to go to a EOP program in college. And I go, me? College? Are you serious? <laughs> I apply. I figure, hey, I'll go in, get a couple of bucks, and I'm off. <laughs> when I got on campus, there was another group, Mecha, El Movimiento Estudiar Chicanos de Aslan. And they welcomed me. And I, well, you know, I was part of it. I became, I, I understood that. I could be part of a group again. And so I involved myself with it. And I was deciding at some point to drop out of school and I realized that I couldn't because the machistas would not allow it. If you drop out, carnal, you're going to hurt the program. If you drop out, carnal, you're going to hurt the raza. You need to be part of this. You need to carry it out. You committed to it. You stay. And if you need to be tutored, you need to be help. We're there, carnal. And believe it or not, they were. Every time I needed help, the machistas were there. I graduated from Fresno City College in 1975. I went out to San Jose because I wasn't allowed to go to Fresno State because I was very much part of what took place in 1970, in September uh, 13th, or excuse me, September 12th, in a demonstration fighting for class of studies. I served a year in jail for that, but I did it because I believed the purpose of what Rasa Studies stood for. I believe what the faculty or the Rasa faculty stood for. They believed in unity, they believed in Catalismo, they believed in a movement in which we could change our community for the better. I supported it then, I supported it now, I will die supporting it. Thank you.